welcome to our third brown bag of the semester. I'm glad we have one more coming up in December. Um, I'm, I'm Stacy Guthrie. I'm with the Center for Consciousness and Transformation. And there's Martha Souter back there. It's also at CCT. So I want to introduce the um, brown bag action group. We have some of the members here today. You guys can stand up. These folks actually do all of the heavy lift, lifting. Don't be shy. <laughs> For the hey, hey, Without them, it just wouldn't happen. So we're so very grateful for them. We have lots of stuff coming up for CCT. You have a stack of flyers sitting in front of you. Um, we have a flyer for our meditation. We have weekly meditation on Thursday. It's part instruction and part practice. So I really encourage you, if you're curious at all about meditation, come check that out. We have a rotating group of four different faculty members who teach it. Um, and it's a great group. Um, no need to feel like you have to come every week or that you need to know anything about meditation. Um, December is going to be, the December brown bag is going to be left, led by Kenda Jong. And um, he is going to be doing, um, oh, what's the topic? Computational models of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And Tom here will be facilitating. Yes, and Ken is my good friend. He's a leading scholar in the area of uh, evolutionary computation. So I think that it would be inspiring. He's also a kind of philosopher of science. So I think that he will be not only strong on the traditional side, but also on the intellectual or conceptual side. Great, thanks. You also have a flyer. It's the goldenrod color sitting in front of you or on your lap or behind you. That is for the minor in consciousness and transformation. This is a brand new minor. Um, registration is just about to begin. So if you have students and you can share with them that there is this wonderful new minor, we would be so grateful. Um, we have some other events coming up that we don't have flyers for yet because they're still a little tentative or they're so new. Um, Michelle Francel, did anybody go to any of the Michelle Francel presentation back in October? She's going to be coming back in November. And um, this time around, she's going to be, we're going to be developing a learning community around contemplative practices to build into the curriculum. And uh, we will be inviting people to apply to become part of that learning community. So these meetings that she's going to have in November are around the learning community and discussions around what that would mean and what is important to people to be part of. So um, look for that in email. The dates are, are going to be November 16th and 17th here on the Fairfax campus. And then we hope to do something on the Arlington campus on November 18th. Um, we're also finalizing plans for Andy Newberg to come to, to campus. Now Andy Newberg is uh, uh, MD. He's also a researcher researcher, leading researcher in um, neuroscience and spirituality. So he's going to be coming to speak on Monday, December 6th, JC Cinema at noon. And again, we're going to have more information coming very soon by email. You guys are all on the email listserv, so you'll get that information. But you might want to save the date if that sounds interesting to you. Um, and finally, uh, one of our um, funders, our only funder, I should say, <laughs> Don Domaski, um, has written his memoirs, a biography, on biography. And we'll be having a little uh, book release party for him mid-December. So again, please look for that. We'd love for you to celebrate with us. Um, we've just created, actually I should say the Brown Bag Committee has just created a uh, Brown Bag Wiki so that uh, these conversations that you have here and the learnings that you have and the ideas you have, and you can share them with other folks in between the Brown Bag meetings. So you'll be getting an invitation for that probably within the next week. We really encourage you to sign on to share your ideas, to share your thoughts about what Cara and Chris are going to share today, and um, to, to be an active participant in that. Finally, um, we are trying a new thing this semester where we're following each of the brown bags with a coffee talk, <laughs> or coffee talk, <laughs> Saturday Night Live present, uh, pronunciation. So um, that is, um, Heather Hare is hostess slash facilitator of that. <laughs> she likes to call herself hostess. Um, so that is going to be, for this um, topic, it's going to be on Thursday, November 18th at 9 a.m. in 418 Enterprise. Again, we'll send an email with a link of a video of this presentation. So if anyone is interested but they couldn't make it and they're asking you about it, say, come to the, to the coffee talk and then you can be part of the discussion. And just a small, um, Chris um, and uh, Carl, we're hoping that they'll join us. So um, we're going we're gonna to just confirm it. Awesome. Okay. All right, so with that, that's everything that's coming up. Um, now let's get to the main event, shall we? Um, so our two presenters today are going to be discussing consciousness at work. 
So Cara Danner is Director of Living, Learning, Community Development, University Life, and she is a Certified Executive Leadership Coach through Georgetown University. She's, she has completed continuing education and somatic coaching through Strode Institute. One of her greatest strengths is generating positive, sustainable change in the organizations where she works. In addition to coaching, Cara has 18 years of experience in leadership development, training, and facilitation in higher education nonprofit agencies, K-12 education in the government sector. Cara earned her master's in organizational learning and knowledge management at mm -hmm. Chris Jefferson earned a master's in educational leadership and policy analysis from the University of Missouri. Chris currently holds the position of assistant director of student involvement for fraternity and sorority life in University Life. He participated in the lead office's uh, summer school of embodied leadership, SOUL, also known as program, in 2009 and 2010, uh, from which he gained tremendous insight and personal growth. So please welcome Brian. So I can actually be completely me and be 
the person that I want to be for this presentation. Um, so they, you know, this message is going to be really impactful. Um, as Carl was talking about, for the sake of what, um, it's about learning how to be present, how, learning how to listen to your body. Um, a lot of the things that we do, it's not just, um, it's not mental um, in terms of, you know, this is not just academic where you just think about it. This is something like physically you will actually feel these things. Um, and being able to kind of combine the two, um, I have intentional uh, intentionality behind the way that I want to show up. And then physically, I also want to be in control of the way my body is kind of sending signals. Um, we always talk about communication. Communication is not just verbal. Communication is also physical, right? So you're going to learn um, how to kind of be intentional and kind of learn um, how do you listen to your body um, and be more intentional about the, all the messages that you're sending. I'm going to give you an example of that um, that I experienced personally. So when I was doing my graduate work here at Mason, we did a Johari window exercise. And I had learned about Johari window, and I kind of knew what it was. But the way that um, my professor introduced it had us each fill out a grid um, for each participant in our small group. We were all in small groups. Um, and our professor had each of us write down all of these different characteristics for the people in our small groups. And the intention really was to help us to see how do I show up in this group. So it wasn't just learning about the boxes and known and unknown. It was really how do I actually show up to these folks in this room. So we did, um, we listed an instrument, a food, a, um, a, a musical instrument, a food. Those were the ones that really stood out to me. An animal, all these different things. And they're very subjective, right? I mean, those are, um, and I, so the people in my group described me as a tiny bird, a soft kitten, <laughs> sunshine, um, I, um, bread, warm, warm milk and cookies, um, peanut butter and jelly, so I got all of these, and I was, none of those are bad things, and you can probably already see, some of you are nodding like, oh, I can see that in her, this is who hard it is, right, so they, they were accurate, but I was, I was, I was like, I was, I was seething, because I was like, I have been with these people for weeks, and there's also, there's so much more substance. Like, how do they not see my power? How do they not see what else I bring to the table? Um, and I really wrestled with that through that course and through that was something, and, you know, I, my whole life, I mean, there was like that story kind of resonates. And then many years later, um, I was out doing a workshop that's the kind of the foundation of a lot of this work with the Strozzi Institute, and you can Google them and I'll send the link. Um, and Dr. Richard Strozzi Heckler has written several books, and he talked about this. Within minutes of meeting me, he said, um, you know, we are creating public identity in each and every moment. We're always generating public identity. Um, so you show up, the way that you walk into the room creates assessments. And so there's lots of you here that I've never met before. And you got an impression already about Chris and I, just from the few minutes that we've already been speaking, we also have an impression of you just by being in front of you here today, just physically the way we show up. And so he said, Kara, you have this big smile. And you share it all the time, but sometimes like I can't tell, I can't tell when there's that genuine smile and when there's maybe your there's something about this smile. And I want you to practice for the whole day, no smiling. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get some there's some smilers in the room. I can see I can see no smiling. And my face felt so weird because I was like, I don't know how I don't know how to do that. And it's true, I have been trained my whole life, this big smile, this um, and sometimes it's absolutely genuine, and sometimes I hide behind it. And it was, that was a somatic assessment. He shared with me, the smile gives me this impression of, I can't quite see who you are, I can't quite see the substance. And it, for me, that related back to graduate school and that exercise of, you know, first, the first thing for me to kind of put out on the table is, I'm nice, you will like me, milk and cookies, birds, whatever. Um, but we'll get to this other stuff a little bit later. And I wanted to be able to bring that stuff forward more quickly. And so that assessment really helped me to be able to do that. That's sort of a premise of some of this work. It's can I pay attention, you know, how do I hold myself? Do I have the body um, that can, you know, command your attention? Like, are, do you feel compelled to listen to me as I stand in front of the room today? Do you feel um, compelled to look at some of the information that we're sharing and how do I want to show up that sort of thing. So those are some of the pieces, that's some of the roots of some of this work. So. Yeah, um, so I guess we can go ahead and start talking about um, our first practice. Uh, we're going to go over three different practices today. Um, centering, um, centering grabs and then CTs, condition tendencies. And we're going to introduce our first practice which is going to be centering. Um, centering is my favorite thing and it really helps guide me throughout the day. Um, 
and centering is at the core of what we do. When it comes to being conscious and being the person that you want to be without center, it's really difficult to do that. Um, and I want to say with this friends, um, centering is not something that we're always going to be able to stay on center, right? There are going to be things that are going to knock us off, that are going to come up, but it's how you can be in choice about, okay, I had this thing that just happened, I had to stay late until 8 o'clock last night to do a hazing investigation on my first day back from vacation. Duh. But I'm here, and I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to be intentional about being with you, and I'm not going to think about that. It could have knocked me off center, but you know what? I'm here, and I'm going to make the most out of this opportunity. I'm going to be the best presenter that I can be for this presentation. And I'm going to be in total control about that. And the way that I can get there is to learn one, slow down, take deep breaths, and relax, be you, and it'll be okay. And we're going to have a good presentation. And what we're going to do now is going to talk a little bit about center, and we're all going to just going to practice center. So, so um, especially in this room, center you know, this, the, with the work that CCT does and meditation and that sort of thing, my guess is that this isn't a wrong concept to anyone here. And we can certainly dim the lights and light candles, we can pull out yoga mats. There's lots of dis different disciplines and different ways to approach this concept. But our um, the philosophy that we're sharing around centering is how do I bring a sense of center to everything that I do? And so eyes open in conversation, in real time. I can center when I'm driving, I can center when my son is screaming, I can center when you know I've got the telephone call in one hand, the email in front of the other, somebody walks into the front door. Um, and I can be off-center doing all of those things. And so how do, we, how do we know what it feels like in our body to have a place of center and then know when we've gotten tipped off and come back to that place of center? Does anyone have, does that resonate with anyone? Do you have a sense, how do you know? Like, how do you feel oh, like that? Well, I think what I feel like myself, right? Okay, okay. Right. so if you feel like yourself, that's great. That sort of sense of connection, like I'm here, I'm present. Yes, another one? Um, one thing that I find is that I find myself trying to be more creative with the situation because I'm more reactive and then so I know, okay, I'm, I'm centered with this experience. That's so that's great. Right. When we have when we come from center, we definitely have like more possibilities open as opposed to closed for us. That's one of the things that we know. <clears throat> I know I'm centered when I'm when I'm when I have a feeling of mindfulness and my my thoughts aren't like a bunch of screaming monkeys. Mm -hmm. you know, there's not a lot of noise in there. Right, absolutely. All that sort of chaos. Breath is so important. One of the first things that we yeah. do um, when we when we get thrown off center is hold our breath. That's one of the first things we do. And one of the first things that we can do to bring it back is from that is breathe again. That's excellent. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I can start to feel the tension start to fall all the way out here. It's almost like I can feel the blood pressure rising physically because I'm I'm fairly in tune with it. And um, when I'm centered, so that's when I'm stressed. When I'm centered, it becomes a, I realize I'm anxious, but I know it's going to be okay and it's going to work out. And the universe will provide and it will be fine. And so it's sort of like I'm in that moment of tension and yet I know it's going to pass. Our capacity increases yeah. when we come from a place of center. That's fantastic. My um, yoga teacher calls this belt <coughs> <Deadly> posture. So should we practice? Absolutely. Okay. So do we do Yeah, let's just stand in this <laughs> one. Let's bring everyone in so that we kind of have a whole circle so where we can see one another's faces. So how do we do this? Oh, yeah, because we've got a little bit more we'll be kind of like vocal. Actually, I want to make sure that everyone is totally comfortable. So I know some people kind of have it bubble. Um, let's make sure we have a good enough space between them. Make sure that you're totally comfortable. Um, if somebody wants to just take a step forward or a step backwards, just to make sure that that's good. Is everybody okay over here? Alright, so Sandra, we want to get to a place where we're totally relaxed and totally in tune with what's going on. We want to be totally present. Um, all of our senses are totally open. Um, and the way that we get there, we talk about Sandra, there's three different dimensions, right? We have our link. Wow. We have our width, that's right. And then we have our depth, right? Okay. So when you think about center, you could imagine that there's a hole in the front of the sky, right? Put the top of your head, sitting all the way down to the So you want to just imagine just like a carousel, right? So it's a tall balance, top to bottom. We don't want to be taller than our natural height, but we want to settle 
start to relax. And call attention in a lot of different places. Some of you have already identified where you are So we're going to do the work from the top all the way down to the toes. So now, focus on taking a deep breath. The way to take a proper deep breath is not just take a breath in your chest, but take a breath where your stomach actually expands.
It's a connection to others. It's a connection to your community, your colleagues, your family. Chris talked about that your um, front and back. That's your connection to your history, your education, uh, where you come from, where you're going, your purpose. The ground, the, the link axon is a connection to ground. Thank you. 
else comes up, no, let's put the turn, we're going to fix it. I'm going to manage this. And we can move smoothly from each situation. And that's why it's so important for us to know how do we get to our center place so that we can address it and address it with full attention and not just kind of one of these or, okay, I know you got something like, hang on one second. I'm going to go ahead and talk to Ashley. I'm going to talk to you too. And then we get overwhelmed, right? But we fully address it and we can be open and mindful and we can see more about what's going on. We can do it more effective in our jobs. So the next practice um, that we're going to talk about is grabs. Um, we call it grabs. You might hear um, triggers. There's lots of different words for this. Um, and that's when you know you get that interrupt, that interruption. So um, whatever it is, it sort of throws you off. Um, one of our colleagues likes to share the example of the she walks into her office um, and the voicemail like a red light on her voicemail, and for her, in her mind, that light was blinking. It doesn't actually blink. Uh, but in her mind, she, kept, she was doing these leadership trainings and saying that blinking light never was going to come up because it's like, it's such, and you know, she just sees that, and then she'll like step out of her office for two minutes, and in fact, she'll like, call me. She wants that light, um, and so she feels that she has a visceral response to that. Um, how many of you can think of something like that, something in your um, day where, you know, when that happens, it just, it evokes this response in you? Yes, yeah. nods. Anyone want to share anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it. it. I mean, it's multiple things every day, right? There's particular footsteps, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's many many things, or just that unexpected, you know. You, and sometimes grabs are good. I mean, sometimes it's um, it's good news, but it still throws you off. Um, so whatever it is, and it's not always. Um, it, it's just, it's not always a bad thing. It's just that whatever it is that kind of pulls you out of the present moment, and then how do you know when to come back? Sometimes we get pulled out for days or weeks. How many of you have had something in your life where there's something going on and you just get pulled out and it's really difficult to come back? Um, or a conversation if there's something happening. So this sense of knowing um, what does center feel like to me and how, like, what, what are the things that I can do that can bring me back to that place all day long? Um, we can be centered when we're walking from this meeting to the next. We can be centered um, as we sit in our chair and you know, kind of tackle what's on our desk. How do we bring that sense of presence to each thing that we do? Yeah, and I would just add, for me, I know I have that knock at the door at 12 o'clock when it's one shot. It's like, do you have a second? I, I really don't, but okay. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and center, and I'm going to allow that person to come in and have that conversation, and we're going to make the most of that conversation, and I'm going to give that person my full attention. Um, these are the things that we want to be focused on. What are those things that kind of, they can create like an actual physical response or something? Um, like I said, for me, I know when I get that knock at the door, my shoulders kind of do this. When I get that, I take that moment where I breathe in and I forget to exhale. It's like this. <laughs> okay. Um, but once I let that exhale go, knowing how to center, I can make that exhale quality and get ready for this conversation. Um, and these are the things we want to think about. So what is it for you? What is one thing, two things, three things? Um, as we kind of go through and as you identify these things, when we go from this presentation, this isn't just one of those things when we present this information to you right now, in the moment. These are things you kind of want to start thinking about. How do I address this when it comes up at 3 o'clock this afternoon? Or I'm going to get that phone call, or I'm going to read that email, or that person's going to drop by my office and expect it. So think of one, I mean, think of a grab, think of a grab that happened today already, that happened this morning, and then just think about that at the moment, and then try to share with your neighbor, um, and just share that example. Let's get some examples in the room. That's pretty easy. <laughs> Yeah, that was my 
okay, I just don't want to deal with this person. Yeah. Like, I may be considering that. I mean, this is not an emotional request. This is just a legitimate, I don't want to manage this request, and I don't have the capacity to manage this request. But there's also creativity. Because in my centeredness, I can also say, you know what, instead of just giving you a no, I'm going to refer you to somebody else who can do a better job <coughs> manage that request. So you want to be careful of not having your blinders on by just making sure that you say that no. Yeah. But if you have the ability and the capacity to make a referral, might want to consider, am I making this request, am I responding to this request, am I blind or wrong, or am I being as creative as I can to make sure that I'm still an assistance person? But I think that when we are centered, when we really uh, are able to keep in the centeredness, it's easier to uh, deal with the energy suckers than when we were just pushed oh, away. And I like, like the idea of referring. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you have to know what, what state you are in in order to take care of everybody else around. And I imagine we're all energy suckers sometimes. You know? mm -hmm. Well, we are suckers and we are givers. You know, it goes both ways. So. It really is. This, is. this is such a nice um, piece of this conversation because the whole point is about relationship, really. It's about the quality of our relationships. And so, um, you know, how do I want, what, what do I want the relationships with my colleagues to be like? What do I want the relationship with my supervisor to be like? Um, is there a give and take there? Can I tell? Um, can I speak honestly about what's going on? Can I speak honestly about what's challenging me? Can I say no? Sometimes we can't. Sometimes, it, you know, sometimes that's, it's not an option. There's work that has to be done. There's requests that have to be made. Um, so it's just, it's finding that balance that can really, you know, show up in each of our relationships with the connection that we that we want to have. I think it's it's important to mention that sometimes um, if, if you're centered and you're faced with a, <clears throat> with a, a response required of some sorts, um, that it's okay to embrace your tolerance for ambiguity. <clears throat> I know a lot I know a lot of people that just hate it when I say, no, I don't know. Because for me that gives me the breath. I might know in 30 seconds because I might have be able to process it, or I might not really know at all. But because I'm centered, I'm not going to speak out of ego and give an opinion that's that's based in speculation or <clears throat> or ego. Um, and, you know, nor am I going to bail out of the situation completely. So it kind of gives me some wiggle room. But some people, uh, my previous wives included, hate that. <laughs> hate that response. <laughs> you gotta know. How can you not know? <laughs> So you, you just spoke to um, a way that you give yourself a little bit of room, so a chance to kind of come back to center in that moment. How are, what are some other ways that people do that? How do you, so we've talked about this sense of center, we've talked about some examples of the things that kind of pull you off. How do you come back? I tell students to email me when they come up, because I was just thinking about how sometimes like panic feeds up. Like it used to be that students would come up and they'd be freaking out about something and I would start to get up, you know, and I would worry about them. So now, okay, so now, I, now like the way that I catch a friend is I say email me. And then that stops the edit, and then later on I can consider when I have more space. That's great. That's great. You build in that time. Lots of lots of it's about building in time. It's the same. You know, I don't know. Um, let's let me think about it. You give yourself and the other person a little bit of room. And we do. We create this resonance with one another. So when the panic starts, everyone starts to feel it. And when somebody can hold the center, everyone starts to feel it. So we need to hold that place. Yeah. Well, this is something that's um, sort of almost a risk speak about in between amongst colleagues because um, for me what's very valuable is the flexibility of my time and being able to manage what my needs are so that I can do my job well and giving myself the time for me it's yoga practice and obviously that's a longer period saying you know email me it's it, it I think that's a great technique but I might need those two hours and I need those two hours and I might need them you know at this particular time of the day and I'm still going to accomplish my job and do it well and do it within the time frame I need to do it, but, but maybe during office hours, I need to be at that yoga class because I can feel Beltway coming in. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so the, having that flexibility to me is absolutely invaluable to be able to manage my time. So when I am in control of my time and my rhythms and, and can take the, the time out, then I can be very effective. But yet, there's this, I feel in the background sometimes the intention about this expectation that I have 
oh, well, you should be in the office at this time and be doing this and this. Fortunately, I work with great people. They let me have a loose ring. <laughs> <laughs> so I do my thing and I can it's be effective. So important. But yeah, it's that's so important to know um, what the practices are that sustain you, right? Because we can, that sort of bank account, if we have this sort of center bank account, um, and you know, we talked about people who pull energy away. There's all kinds of people and tasks that pull energy away. What gives it back? And if it's yoga, if it's a meditation practice, if it's reading, if it's a journaling practice, whatever it is, having those practices in our lives um, build us the foundation to be able to come back to these tools. I'm so glad you spoke about that. I think there's also something about, um, I think sometimes when things get to us, it's because we're taking these personally. And, and I don't mean that like necessarily on the level that, that we usually think of it, but that um, you know things aren't happening to me. Things aren't, you know, why is it my boss doing this to me? Why is this person cutting me off? Why, you know what I mean? That, that we sometimes we think of ourselves as victims a little bit. And if we let go of that and just know that it's the natural order of things, a segue to kind of the next part. I, I want to make sure <laughs> I want to make sure we touch on this part. And I talked a little bit about when I was uh, demonstrating the, the depth um, about our future and our past. We we have conditioned tendencies. There are things that we naturally respond when these things come up when a, a grab into your life, you, you respond in a certain way and you've done it your entire life. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what to be mindful about what is that? Like what is my, my CT? I know for me I have the the shoulders go up and I stop breathing for a second. Mm -hmm. What are some of the CTs that you, you have? Um, if you've ever thought about that, if you've ever been able to recognize it. So, what, what do you notice about when those things come up? Mine was the smile, right? Mm -hmm. I think just conditioned well over time to like mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. When I'm nervous and I don't know if anybody's picked up on I fiddle with my brain a lot. <laughs> and it's really to keep me from doing this because I know that this is about relationships. So I want to try to make it as, be as open as possible. So I have to do something, and then some presenters always have to have a pen in their hand, or they have to have some object. Um, and those are just things that I've noticed because typically I will stay in and I'll take up as little room as possible, and I'll kind of just, I was a shy kid, and that's just who I am. But in order to get over those things, there are other ways that I can overcome it. But my condition tendency is always to be small. I have a question that maybe, I'm not sure if this is a condition tendency or not, whatever the phrase is, I'm sorry, but I find I, I can't even think of my best is too scattered. Yes. And so nothing can happen until I straighten it. Mm -hmm. And I think my office colleagues for a long time, especially when I first got there, sort of amused by that. I mean, there are no papers on my desk because it's all put away so I can bring it up the next one. Is that what you mean? Uh, Absolutely. I would definitely say that's a condition. Yeah, let me ask you this. Is there a problem with that? <laughs> this, thing, this, is not a, this is not a problematic thing. This is what has safeguarded you and allowed you to be the person that you are today. It's about recognizing who you are in that moment. And I bet you there's more to your, your CT than just your papers have to be organized. I bet you walk into an office that has papers scattered around and you have a physical reaction. I tend to want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's different than straightening the picture frame, which of course, you know, I mm -hmm. also want to do the picture frame myself. Not to <laughs> 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 the opposite thing about it as well. But, I, but uh, um, this morning, Nancy and I were trying to talk about something mm -hmm. have today. Um, I've been out of the office for two days, and so picking up the mail, um, picking up things people had left me, it just got kind of, yeah. and so I, I stopped functioning. And, and <coughs> I'm very similar. Um, I can't think about anything else until I have this organized. And, and that, 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 that actually may not mean straight corners. It just may mean, okay, those go here, and this goes here, and this is so easy to get another way to and the piece of it, the, the piece of it, I mean, this is something, our condition tendencies are, I mean, they, they start when we're, you know, really little. 
Um, and it's, you know, that smile protected me in my family and in school and growing up. I mean, there are all these places where that served me. And then there was this place where it wasn't, um, where it wasn't serving me, where I, I wanted a different result out of what was going on. So becoming aware of it and being able to practice um, being who I am without having to have, I mean, the, I, I want to smile when there's really something to smile about, but to not have to do it all the time. And so, you know, just paying attention to the places where maybe some of those things kind of get in our way. And then, because they serve us, they help us, but they also can get in our way sometimes. And so, it I can slow me down. Right, okay. right. And so then you just, you kind of go, okay, not right now. Like, I need to do this, or I need to, you should kind of shift it a little bit. It comes back to that public identity. You know, we're always producing public identity. What's the identity I want to produce? What are the assessments that I want you to have about me? Um, you know, how do I want to show up at work? What, what kind of relationships do I want to have at work? Um, how, what kind of connection do I want to have with people? And then what's going to generate those kinds of connections? It is, I want to pay attention to the time. I'm watching time for some people. So it's right around 1 o'clock for folks who need to scoot out around 1. Um, we're here another 15 minutes or so. We're going to kind of shift to answer questions um, and continue the conversation for those who are No problem at all. No thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, any. So, we just want to take a few minutes for those of you who are able to stay and just answer any questions that you have, kind of turn to the conversation. Yeah. You both referred to soul. Um, what exactly is that? Great. Sorry about that. So soul is um, an acronym for School of Embodied Leadership, and that's one of the courses that the Strozzi Institute offers, and we also offer it on this campus for students here, and it's phenomenal. It's a week-long intensive course overnight um, retreat you really like turn off the cell phones disconnect from the computers all of it um, and it's this is just you know the, the tiniest piece of that it's very intense it's, it's powerful work I'm just curious because um, you've been at the institution for a while both pre and post these practices <laughs> can you maybe comment on if you've noticed how it's changed the division and how people work together to share sure. um, Yes, and we can both share that. And I think that, so there's layers to that. Some of it is, I know I embarked on some of this work for my own self. So there's some of how I show up different. Um, as, we, as we brought this to university life and started trying to um, teach it, I mean, there's varying levels. Like everybody comes to it at their own place. And so we just try to do little things. Like there's some meetings, not every meeting, but some of the meetings that I'm in will start um, with, maybe, I wouldn't call it a mood check, but I might just say, okay, what are you leaving, like what are you setting aside in order to be present here today? Um, and people just kind of go around the room and everybody says, oh my gosh, I just got this, or I just had that, or I'm doing, and it just feels like, I mean, that little practice changes the whole meeting. It's just, the, and, it's, and I don't know what it is about me that makes it possible when I'm running a meeting, like why can I do that sometimes and then other times I'm like, you know, I don't write into the agenda. Like what is it about who's in the room or me or what, you know, what is that? And um, so that's one example. I mean, in circles where people really know the century language, I would just say, like, can we just take, like, in, when folks know it, it gives you a common language to be able to say, can we just center for a moment? Grab, having the shared language, I mean, I can go to Chris and say, I'm grabbed. <laughs> and then he goes, 